All right, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about some common data structures in Julia. We won't cover all of them, but the ones that are mostly used, uh, the, the most useful for scientific computing. Uh, the first of those is without a doubt the array data structure. <clears throat> so arrays are n-dimensional data structures uh, of a common type, and the type could be any, right? Uh, so any is the catch-all type. Uh, it, it's the highest abstract uh, type, which all other types uh, fall below, right? So um, arrays could even be defined to be uh, of type of array, so so each component in the array could be another array itself. Um, the the type constructor has this format where T is the type. Again, this could be anything. Uh, and N is the dimension. Right? So you can you can omit the dimension, um, and it can be inferred from the argument. So I have an example of that here. So this is how we would construct an array. In this case, I just used the type Any. And it's going to be a three-dimensional array. And then what we're going to basically fill the array with is, is nothing. So this is just a, uh, an instance of the nothing type. Uh, or, you know, it's, it's equivalent to like a null type in another language. Or maybe none in Python, if you're familiar with that. And it's got three dimensions, so we need to specify the dimensions. And these kind of read from the inside out, right? So there's going to be three rows and two columns, right? So three rows and two columns. So you can think of that as like a little three by two matrix. And then there's gonna be three of those, right? And so uh, this is how it prints to the screen. But yeah, so the inner dimension is three, three rows, two columns, and then there's three of those. Right? So this is uh, constructing a, a three dimensional um, array. Uh, like I said, we can omit the dimension if we'd like, and it will be inferred from the arguments here in the construction. So in this case, we're going to, again, create an array uh, of type any, uh, which has the elements nothing, the null type, and it's going to have two rows and three columns, and I'm going to assign that to a variable x. So that's what you see there. So uh, vectors are arrays. They're like a, like a subtype of array or um, that's not the right way to say it. It's not a subtype of array. Vector is an array. It's just an array with a, with n, the dimension, fixed at 1. And a matrix, similarly, is also an array, but with the n dimension fixed at 2. So when we construct vectors and matrices, there's no need to provide the second argument because it's fixed, right? So a vector is 1. In this case, um, we're going to have a vector of float 64s. Uh, we'll, we'll leave them undefined. So these numbers that appear here, they're I meaning effectively 0, but these are just whatever numbers were in memory in the location where this was allocated. And we can overwrite these values, and I mean, you should if, if you're going to do anything useful with this. But So this is a, a vector with three components, you see there, uh, a matrix of float 64s. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so there we also have, uh, you know, just the, the, the kind of random numbers that were in memory there. In this case, it's a three by three. And again, the dimension is two. So it's a two two dimensional array uh, with three rows and three columns. Uh, there's other ways, you know, shorthand notation for constructing uh, vectors. For example, uh, you can you can just specify the type followed by square brackets and a comma separated list of numbers that will give you a vector uh, like that. Um, likewise, for a matrix, uh, you can basically have semicolon separated rows, right? And the columns are just spaces in between. So again, in this case, I'm using float 64, but uh, could be uh, could be any other valid numeric type there uh, to produce a matrix like this. Uh, we're going to assign that to value y, and we're going to use y in some of the examples uh, in the future. So just keep in mind that y is a two rows and three columns, and it just has um, sequential numbers across the rows one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, just keep that in mind because we're going to be modifying it in the in the examples to come. So uh, we can index into arrays uh, similarly to other languages. Uh, we use square brackets for this. Um, in Julia, the uh, indices start with one. Uh, that's different from say Python, which starts at zero. So here, this, this indicates the first row and the second column, right? So if you remember why, 
was uh, just sequential, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so, you know, the, the one, two entry was in fact two. Uh, so that, that's the way to get it. We can also do slices. So this is similar to Python NumPy type syntax. So here we, we're saying we want to go uh, from the first to the second row in the second column. And so then we get this subset here. Uh, and by default, this the, what this returns is actually a copy of the data. So we'll see we'll see an example of that in a second uh, with more clarification. But this is a this is a, is a copy of the data that was uh, in the original vector y or uh, matrix y. Uh, there's also this special syntax uh, indicating the end, right? So you don't need to know uh, specifically how many rows and columns a matrix has. You can just specify or, or any array, specify end, and it will take it, right? So in this case, end uh, represents the uh, second row and third column, and there we're setting the value, right? So in this case, we're actually assigning, right? So remember, originally this was six here. Uh, we've assigned it to 100, and then we're printing out the new array, right, the, the modified array. And so you see that there. Um, likewise, you know, if we go back to our original array X, which was uh, defined as, you know, originally just nothing, a bunch of null types, um, and because that matrix has the type any, we, we can, you know, put anything into it, right? So in this case, in the one one entry, I'm assigning the value test, which is a string, right? And then in the uh, second row and all columns, I'm assigning the value one. Now notice the little dot equal syntax here. This is because I'm doing multiple assignments at once. Um, I have to use the dot equals and, and we'll see more about that. The dot indicates broadcasting operation. If you're familiar with that terminology from NumPy, it means you know, we're broadcasting this operation across all the values here uh, in, the, in all the columns. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, Normally, when we do an assignment, so we take a subset of the array Y. Uh, in this case, we're going to take uh, the first and second rows and the first and second columns to give this subset of a matrix here. We're going to assign that to a new variable Z. Uh, this is a this is a copy, right? So so this doesn't reference back to the original array Y, and that is quite different from NumPy. If you're familiar with the way that works in NumPy, in NumPy, this value Z would just be a view into the original array Y. And we can verify that. So if we say reassign the one one entry of Z uh, and then print them both out, right? We see that uh, Z, the one one entry of Z, which was originally one, uh, is now a hundred, as we'd expect, right? So we've we've made this reassignment, and now we have a hundred here. But if we go and look at the original array Y, it's unchanged, right? So there's still a one there, right? Now, if we want a, a subset of a matrix that's just a view into another matrix. We can use this view macro. And so then this basically sets now Z as a view into the first and second columns and rows of Y. And now we can do an reassignment on Z. And if we print out Y, we see that in fact, that entry has changed, right? So this, this allows us to have a view and that, you know, that doesn't create a copy. It's, it's um, you know, it's a view into memory of the array Y and we can make changes in place there. So that's kind of handy. Uh, to have and and this uh, is 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 the kind of behavior that you'd expect uh, if you're coming from Python NumPy uh, type uh, assignment operations here with respect to NumPy arrays anyway. So there are some con other convenience constructors for arrays. Uh, for example, if we wanted to have an array that was all of all zeros to begin with, then we could set it, uh, in this case, I'm setting it to the type int32, and it's going to have two rows and three columns, uh, and it's going to be all zeros of, of that type, right? The default type, so if we admit the type, uh, the default type will be a float64. So if I just say zeros, two, three, then I'm going to get a float64 array. Uh, likewise, for ones, again, I could have I could show an example where I had the type. Uh, I'm not doing that here, but it's the same interface as the zeros command. If you omit the type, then you get automatically float 64s. And again, then you're just setting the dimension of, of the array. So this is a ones. So this is familiar. This should be familiar notation to NumPy users, to MATLAB users. There's zeros and ones functions in those languages as well. 
There's also a, a command fill. So in this case, we can, uh, you know, you can fill it with anything you want. I'm, I'm, I'm setting it to uh, the values to 77 and assigning it to a two, two by two matrix. Uh, and you see that there. And then, and then finally, if we use the fill with an exclamation point, this is an in place fill. So in this case, we have we already had an array Y. If you recall, it was just uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and, and in this case, we're going to fill Y with the value 22 in place, right? So it doesn't do a new memory allocation. It, it, it fills it in place. And uh, that's what we have there. So more uh, operations on arrays. So, you know, uh, in this case, I'm showing Y. This is our, our array that's uh, now, since we filled it with the value 22, but again, it's a two by three array. If I uh, set a vector X, right? Uh, so a vector has got one, uh, one column and three rows. Uh, if I set that there, and then I just do a multiplication Y times X because the dimensions match, uh, it's automatically going to do a matrix vector multiplication. And that's what happens here. And you could verify that that is the, the, the right result there. Um, if we wanted to do element-wise multiplication for vectors or arrays, then we have to use the dot uh, asterisk notation, right? So this is similar to MATLAB, uh, where we have a dot star. And in this case, you know, the, the first element of X is multiplied by the first element of X. The second element of X is multiplied by the second element of X. And the third element of X is multiplied by the third element of X to produce this result. And again, you can verify that that is correct. <clears throat> the, the addition or subtraction of arrays of the same size automatically gives element-wise addition, meaning you know, there's no confusion about what the asterisk or multiplication, uh, you know, with, with, with respect to addition or subtraction, there's, there's no equivalent like matrix multiplication or dot product operation. So there's no confusion there. We can just add two, two, two arrays together that are the same size and you get element-wise um, element addition. Um, we can we can also broadcast the addition operation along matching dimensions of arrays. So here I'll, I'm showing uh, the size of the transpose of Y. So now Y was originally two rows and three columns, but if I transpose it now, it has three rows and two columns. And then I have a vector that has three rows and one column, so that I can do this dot plus operation across those two arrays. And what will happen is uh, the 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 you know each row of uh, the elements of X will be added to each column of, uh, of the matrix Y transpose. Uh, and again, you can verify that those are the correct numbers. Um, a nice feature here is that any scalar operation in Julia can be vectorized with this dot operator. So for example, if I define a function, I'm just going to call it my scalar operation, it takes two arguments, X and Y, and then computes uh, the product of X x times y plus x squared times y squared. And I can verify that this works uh, by just putting some numbers in. So if, if I call it on two scalar numbers, floating point numbers, then this value evaluates to six here. I can take that same uh, function and without any modification, um, I can call it for two array arguments, right? And if I put the dot here right before the function call, the opening parentheses, then I will get the element wise operation, <clears throat> I will get the element wise operation uh, just as if the arguments say one and four were called for my scalar operation, followed by two and five, followed by three and six, and that will produce these three answers here. And again, you can verify it. For example, if we take one and four, one times four is four, plus um, one squared is one times four squared is 16. So this evaluates to 16, 16 plus four is 20, right? And uh, that's what we have there. So this is a really nice feature in Julia that you can take any, you can basically write a, a, a function to operate on a scalar, and then you can broadcast it or vectorize it uh, across any two, two arrays or any array arguments at all. Okay. So in this case, there's just two, but there could be more or less. Um, there are many uh, array functions that, you know, we could spend an hour talking about them all, but, you know, this is kind of similar things that we're used to in other languages, like computing sums and cumulative sums and, and uh, you know, cumulative products, products <clears throat> uh, for, for various arrays. For example, there's one called accumulate, 
which basically, in the way it's written here, reproduces the cumulative sum feature. So the array is one, two, three. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, add those together and accumulate them uh, along the way, right? So one goes there, and then one plus two go, becomes three and goes there, and then uh, one plus two plus three uh, becomes six and goes there. And, and there's a whole list of these kind of functions that can operate on arrays, and you can look at the Julia documentation um, uh, with this link here to, to see some of those other ones. There's the accumulate one uh, there and uh, the doc examples and whatnot. <clears throat> so moving off from arrays, we have uh, tuples. And in, in this case, tuples are, uh, there's really quite little difference between tuples and, and Python, if you're familiar with those. Um, you know, tuples are fixed, leaf, uh, fixed length containers that uh, use the parentheses around them to define them, separated the, the entries by columns, I'm sorry, by commas. And uh, they can contain anything, right? So in this case, I'm, I'm holding this tuple uh, that I'm assigning the variable x contains a, a string uh, as well as a floating point number as well as an integer, right? And we can index into them in the same way uh, we would an array. Uh, tuples are always just, um, you know, at the outer level, they're just one dimensional. So you just, you know, here take um, x1, uh, that would return a string again one index, so the first thing in the tuple uh, is a string. Uh, however, tuples are immutable, uh, unlike arrays, right? So I can't do assignment on a, on a tuple. If I try to, then, then I get an error, as you see here. So that's one uh, key difference between uh, tuples and arrays. Um, in Julia, you, you can have named tuples. So syntax is a little bit different here. But basically, same idea that uh, you know we, we can have in, uh, storage of multiple things. And this in this time, we we actually have a name for each of them, so A, B, and C. And uh, the nice thing about this, it gives us a little bit uh, additional syntax into how to reference the values, right, or index the values. So I can still use uh, the X1 type uh, indexing, but I can also use this more object-oriented type. Uh, uh, dereferencing, right? So a, x dot a will give me the value uh, a uh, that's named a, and in this case, it's a string, right? Um, we can also unpack tuples. Again, it's, this syntax should be familiar to Python users. So we have this tuple x, and we want to unpack it into uh, three variables. In this case, uh, I'm actually only keeping the, the, this uh, value here, which is the second value associated with b. Uh, the other two I'm, I'm throwing away. And so this the syntax for that means, you know, this underscore, which is otherwise not a valid var variable name in Julia. But in the case of unpacking a tuple, it, it means that we're, you know, not interested in storing, we're not interested in storing the unpacked values of a string or uh, 33, but only rather just this middle one, B, um, which is 1.0. And if we, you know, after we unpack it, we can print it to the screen and, and we see it is in fact 1.0. Uh, another useful data structure is uh, dictionaries. So these are hash tables in other languages. Uh, again, a lot of similarities with uh, dictionaries in Python if you're familiar with them. So you can, you can create them with this kind of syntax where we use this equals um, greater than sign. And so it's, you know, these are keyword value pairs. So here the keyword is A, and then in this case, the value is a string. And the keyword is B, and the value is 33. And finally, the keyword is name, and the value is John. And then we can, you know, index or reference those values, look up those values in the dictionary by using the keywords, right? So uh, Dick B will return 33, and uh, Dick name returns John there. <clears throat> um, just an alternative way to construct dictionaries is with a collection of tuples. So again, I use the the Dick. Uh, constructor here and the arguments then would be a list or, uh, or an array rather. So square braces followed by a bunch of tuples that contain keyword value, right? So a, a string, b33, name John. And then once it's constructed, you can access the, the entries just like you would have uh, if you had constructed it this way. There's no difference. A lot of more data structures in Julia. Uh, we'll pick a few up as we go along. Uh, you, can, you can see many of the other ones uh, collections and data structures in this section of the documentation here. <clears throat>